Divine Truth Theme Discussions Discussions between Jesus and Mary about specific topics and issues. This is Session 5, Part 3 of the discussion, God's Laws of Forgiveness and Repentance, where Jesus and Mary continue discussing God's principles and laws of forgiveness and repentance, delivering more information about compensation itself, and examining some of the emotions and feelings we may have about sin and personal truth. This session was recorded on the 17th of October 2017 from 2 p.m. in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. Examples of ripple effect penalties for past sin. Mm. So can you give us some examples of how ripple effect, how the ripple effect penalizes past unloving behavior? Yep. So in this section, we're really going to answer that question using three examples, aren't we? Yes, yeah. basically, you know, how we did the three examples on the positive effects. Yes. Then we want to use the same three examples for the negative effects and just see, see, what, we got, see, see what it comes out like. So, so basically, we'd like to look at the issues of being truthful or being dishonest in this case. Mm -hmm. We want to look at the, the point of being moral or in this case, being immoral, yes. what, what, the, what happens there. And also being ethical, or in this case, being unethical, is what we're going to be examining. So uh, if, we, if we can examine those three areas, maybe again, we can illustrate how the ripple effect that works mm -hmm. with regard to the compensatory laws and, and what goes on in terms of the ripple effect, in terms of what happens to the soul. Yes. Yeah. Okay, great. Penalties for being dishonest or withholding truth. So this is our first example in the section. What are the penalties for being dishonest or withholding truth? Well, again, we probably need to see firstly that the average person in the world, there is a lot of world-based pressure to see that actually dishonesty is rewarded most of the time. So, so, so there's a lot of pressure to be dishonest yeah, in the world today. And, and, and frequently dishonesty is rewarded. Mm-hmm. So, you know, there's, there's the area where we think it's rewarded by, firstly, that it's going to help me avoid trouble. Yeah. So most people believe that by being dishonest... Or just not only speaking or not, up about truth. Or not yeah. being transparent. Yes, that's good Which point. is what we still classify as being dishonest. Yes. Is, is basically going to help me avoid a whole lot of trouble. Mm. So as long as I lie or imply that nothing's wrong when I know something is, or as long as I don't say anything about things that I know, then everything will be fine mm -hmm. and that will help me get away with things. So there's a seeming reward yeah. for this sort of dishonest behaviour. Mm -hmm. yep. And then there's also um, the concept, the opposite concept of what we discussed in the truthfulness section on this yes. same subject, and that is that, oh, this is going to help me avoid trouble with others or avoid helping get others get into trouble. So if I'm dishonest yep. uh, about things, you know, things to do particularly about the people that I think I love, like my family or my friends, and I'm dishonest uh, with other people about those people, then what that will allow me to do is it will it'll protect those people. You know, the, the people I love will get protected by me being dishonest. That's what we think, isn't it? That's what we think. Yeah. Obviously, that, that is not true, but and it's certainly not true from God's law's perspective. God, nothing protects people from God's laws when they're dishonest. Mm -hmm. but, but that's what we believe. We believe that if... If we are not truthful about what other people that are our friends have done, mm -hmm. right, then, and we don't, you know, we're not forcing them to own up to anything and we're not raising issues with them that need to be raised, then we think that's going to mean that we've got a better relationship with that person. Plus, also, that person uh, is not going to get into trouble from others. Mm. And so we think we're protecting them. And obviously, that's not true, but, but that's what we think. There's, there's another element to this as well, isn't there, where um, I cannot tell you something because I want you to behave or feel a certain way or make choices in a certain direction. And if I am fully transparent about what I feel or what I think or what I've done or, uh, or just another factor, uh, you might make different choices that frighten me or challenge me or... Or that you don't want me to make at all. Just yeah. in general, <laughs> mean you're not going to do what I want. Yes. And so very often uh, we almost reward not telling the truth in ourselves, but also in others. I've had, you know, so-called friends in the past say, 
oh, don't tell the truth about that because, you, you know, and don't be transparent in your relationship because that, that's not going to end well. No, no. Yeah. It's like, you know, a friend advising another friend who's cheated on their partner to not tell their partner because that's just going to make things hard. You've done the, the business now. You need to own it for yourself. And don't tell them, though, because that just makes them feel bad then. And yeah. So there's all these excuses given for not being honest and yeah. open and truthful. Yeah. There's also the uh, the prevention of manipulation. So we often believe that if we tell the truth to other people, they will manipulate us. Mm -hmm. And and uh, the best way to avoid their manipulation is to not bother telling the truth, yeah. rather than actually work through why we feel manipulated. Yes. Um, we, we avoid telling the truth so that they have any ammunition to manipulate us with, yes. is the way we see it. So. Yeah, because it's not the exposure of truth, is it, that, is, that creates the potential for me, for me to be manipulated. It's my avoidance of emotion exactly. surrounding certain things that cause me, cause me to act in a way... Uh, that, that, that allows other, others to manipulate me. Yes, yes. Th under their manipulation. Yes, yeah. yeah. So... You've just now outlined all the things of basically where we feel like it's not, there's no penalties for being dishonest. It's almost like there's rewards. That's right. Everyone in the world would have you believe that the majority of the time there's rewards for being dishonest. And in fact, uh, in the way the world is today, most people from a very young age learn yes. that there seems to be rewards for being dishonest. And so yeah. that's what causes them as adults to also believe that. Yeah. Mm. But we're here to say that's not the case. <laughs> not the case from God's perspective and not the case from the law of compensation. Not in reality. It's not a real no. uh, reward. There's no, no real There's advantages. no real advantages and there's a huge amount of disadvantages, actually. Mm -hmm. So let's work through some specific examples. I'll list the examples and perhaps you can let us know what the penalties involved are and sure. the ripple of penalties because the ripple penalty is not just involving... Out the immediacy on our soul, but also the longer term effects in our physical and spirit bodies, yeah. in our relationships, all of those things. Yes, yes. yes. Okay. <laughs> so first example, not declaring my taxable income. Okay. So this is a very simple one. I think the majority of people always have a tendency to falsify or at least try to reduce as much as possible taxable income declarations and and a lot of times in businesses you see people putting money under the counter type of thing mm -hmm. and not declaring it and all these kind of things cash transactions are encouraged and so forth and so you sort of see that there's a lot of desire to avoid now there is a lot of societal based penalties to that as well as soul based penalties mm -hmm. it means that the governments can uh, can can can't collect as much tax and therefore they're not able to do as much with the money they collect and therefore they've got to raise taxes using other methods mm -hmm. and and it encourages governments to have more control over you rather than less by mm -hmm. not declaring your income it encourages it, governments it encourage well it encourages them to make laws that mm -hmm. circumvent uh people being dishonest yes and and the more they make the more controlled a society becomes yeah so the more laws the government makes the more controlled the society becomes so you're actually encouraging people to to attempt to control you because you're being dishonest with mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then there's the immediate soul-based penalties that occur, of course. And and all of those reflect about are about guilt and shame. Uh, immediate guilt and shame is usually caused by 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 us being dishonest. Mm -hmm. And therefore we carry that around with us. Our conscious bothers us a lot. Uh, we don't have any sort of freedom under those circumstances. Mm -hmm. And eventually we've got to detune from that. So we've got to start denying those emotions, yes. which most people now then do. Mm -hmm. And then as they deny the emotions, that of course causes their downward spiral into a darker condition mm. as well. So, so it affects their future behavior and future actions. They sort of see, well, if I can get away with it with the government, then maybe I can get away with stealing from people yeah. uh, generally. And really in a lot of ways, stealing from the government is the same as stealing from people because mm -hmm. you really are not sharing the workload, if you like, uh, and particularly in fair government or dem yeah. democratic governments, you're not really sharing the workload anymore. Mm -hmm. And so, so these kind of problems all, uh, are also about the issues of equality and superiority, yeah. which start to get displayed within you, where you think that other people should pay tax, but you shouldn't have to, yeah. and yeah. so forth. You should benefit from the taxation of other people but not have to pay for any of the services you use mm -hmm. and there's a lot of other very bad uh desires and 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 
motives that start getting generated yep. when you start developing these kind of attitudes. Yes, mm. yeah. Would you say they're generated or they're exposed or they can lead? Well, they can grow. You know, you think you're starting from a small thing, which is just not declaring a little bit of income, Mm -hmm. not realising that firstly, it's triggered by some core emotions that are quite severe from God's perspective. Mm -hmm. But also in the longer term, you can sort of spiral down a little into expecting that others give you what you're not willing to give them, being, you know, being unethical and immoral with them and so forth. And, and these kind of behaviours are overlooked because you've already overlooked the first one. The first one. So oftentimes we, oftentimes we overlook something with a government or with a business first. Mm-hmm. And usually because we've now developed the attitude of overlooking it with the institution, yes. we now begin to overlook it with individuals. Mm. And, uh, and so now that's going to personally affect a lot of people as well as does the overlooking of it with governments and institutions because the institutions and governments are made up of people yeah and therefore we are actually not loving people yeah by not sharing in these kind of costs that are associated with a society yep yeah yep all right uh, next one not confessing to past crimes <laughs> yeah that's a common one too isn't it where somebody will do something wrong and then they you know then they come to their senses and realize well you know, that was in the past. I'm just going to leave it dead and married in the past. Uh, I, in other words, they don't want to pay the penalty mm-hmm. for any past behaviour by confessing about it. Mm-hmm. When you confess it, there is the potential that now a penalty would be demanded from the government or from you know society, yep. and we don't want to pay it. So we decide to not declare our crimes, if you like. Yeah. The problem with that is that from God's perspective, all of our crimes are well known. And from the law's perspective, our desire to not declare them is also an aspect of dishonesty, yeah. which means that our condition is going to be degraded. Mm. And uh, as such, it, it affects severely, quite severely our future, you know, in terms mm-hmm. of what happens after we pass. But it also affects our, our life now because now we're in a state where the, our conscience is still bothering us. Mm-hmm. And we're living in a state also of potential disaster, Mm. and therefore living in a state of dread. Yeah. So we're always dreading a potential disaster that somebody might find out. Yeah. And then what will happen? Yeah. Somebody who knew us into, with that interaction might declare it. Then what will happen? We're always worried, or dreading what might happen. And this causes us to not live life with, with any, um, what I would classify as enthusiasm. You know, mm-hmm. we're always worried about events in their past catching up with us in our future. Yeah, yeah. And you and I have had some interesting private discussions about the preoccupation with the penalty, the societal penalty, um, uh, and a lack of sensitivity to the soul-based penalty that's already <laughs> yeah, the been... the law-based penalty from God's perspective. Yes, because uh, often we can be quite detuned, as we've spoken about it previously in this session, yeah. from that immediacy of that compensation, but that... Even when we deal with some of the societal-based penalties, there's still a soul-based penalty that then is affecting our physical health and our uh, our spirit life as well, isn't it? Yeah, and, uh, and it also demonstrates a condition of love that is out of harmony with anything above the first sphere of the spirit world. So, yeah. so we're going to, while we remain in these conditions, we're going to remain in that condition as well, whether we live on earth or pass. Yeah. And therefore, we're not. We're also. We're basically preventing our future happiness yeah. Yeah. by by making these choices to only honour the government, but not honour God's laws. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, another one. Uh, not confessing to sexual infidelity. Yeah. Well, this one's quite obvious. Again, you, you're always worried that the other person is going to find out that you did what you did. Also, you've already broken the relationship by being sexually unfaithful. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, and you're not giving the other person any chance to know about it. But also internally, there's issues why you were sexually unfav- uh, unfaithful. Yeah. And those issues are not being addressed. Mm. And if you don't address them, then it's likely you will do the same thing again at some point mm-hmm. as well. So, so, you know, there's a lot of serious consequences morally and, and, uh, and for your relationships if you don't declare openly your sexual behaviour. Mm. Mm. And what about the ideas, the idea of uh, when I have been sexually unfaithful 
am I more likely to attract a partner then? You mentioned that I'm, I'm, and I have, if I have done it and I haven't dealt with it um, and haven't been honest about it, am, I'm obviously more likely to attract a partner who would have the same state. Not necessarily. You, you can often attract a partner with a codependent state, which is yeah. a person who believes that, you know, you should be sexually faithful yes. and they would be absolutely angry and devastated if you're not. Yeah, yeah. And if they ever found out, they might try to punish you about, you know, and get very upset with you about it. That's yeah. probably a person you might attract under those circumstances. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Where, whereas you may, if you were openly declaring of all of your of all of your sexual feelings, yeah. um, you may attract a partner who's a bit more forgiving about, yeah. about those things while you're working through them. So, yeah. a lot, you know, a lot depends, doesn't it, on, on with the law of attraction as to what your attitudes are and, mm -hmm. and your condition as to what needs to be addressed. Yeah. But here we're talking about so, uh, compensation. Well, obviously, from a compensation point of view, you've already broken the relationship. You, you're not in an intimate relationship anymore with the mm -hmm. person you're with because you're not intimate with them. You're not yeah. open with them about your true behavior. Mm -hmm. And so therefore no true intimacy is possible. And, uh, and that's a major negative consequence of that kind of behavior. Yeah, yeah, okay. Mm. Um, claiming I took an action when I did not. <laughs> yes, well, these kind, of, uh, these kind of examples all relate to uh, us attempting to get away with things um, or attempting to make ourselves look pretty good when when we haven't done things. And uh, in other words, lying about things that just to prevent ourselves from being attacked or or from being re made responsible by somebody for, for our actions. Mm -hmm. So these are all about avoidance of personal responsibility. Yep. Now, any person from God's perspective who is avoiding personal responsibility has a huge amount of uh, compensatory penalties associated with it that and, and God will ensure that eventually that any one of the areas where you try to avoid responsibility will be addressed. Mm -hmm. um, so sooner or later any lie you tell about whether you did something and you didn't will soon be found out yeah. and any time that you said you did do something when you didn't that will also be found out. Yeah. And any time you did actually do something when you, you know, and then yeah. claim you didn't, that will also be found out. So, yeah. you know, yeah. it's like, yeah. so at the end of the day, you know, the God's laws are trying to expose all of these conditions mm -hmm. and sooner or later you will be exposed. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's, there's, yeah. And whether that's even on earth or just as soon as you arrive in the spirit world. Yeah. But, but if you haven't been exposed on earth, you definitely will be exposed in the spirit world. Yeah. And, and also there's a compensatory effect, isn't there, upon yourself and everyone around you, isn't there, when you are... Um, dishonest. Dishonest, yeah. Yeah, that nobody trusts you. Yeah. You, you barely even trust, you, and you also don't trust anybody. Yeah. The reason why is because you think everybody is the same as you. Yes. So I notice this a lot in people when, who interact with me who are dishonest themselves they then claim that I will be, mm -hmm. you know, because they expect that of everybody. Yes. Because that's what they that's see in they themselves. That's yes. how they think. Yeah. And, uh, and they can't sort of contemplate a world where somebody is actually honest. Yes. And it's quite interesting to see yeah. that as a result of that, they themselves are personally dishonest, but they also then believe that everyone around them is also dishonest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so it affects your belief systems. It affects your trust of people and lots of other aspects which are all going to create unhappy life mm. uh, are all affected by these kind of belief systems. Um, just thinking of a specific example, mm -hmm. I read a book recently um, by uh, written by a man and a woman and he had raped her when they were teenagers. Yes. And basically uh, they had never dealt with it or talked about it, no nothing was ever prosecuted or anything. Mm -hmm. uh, they went away and had th their lives and then some years later she contacted him and said look you raped me mm -hmm. and it was terrible and mm -hmm. uh, I'm devastated and instead of denying it he admitted it admitted it mm -hmm. and he started a dialogue with her um, with the purpose for both of them to deal with it mm -hmm. and then they wrote a book a and book about did it. a yep. TED talk and were very public about it mm -hmm. now obviously I feel what he's done is very courageous mm -hmm. because he has admitted to some, to a sin. He's which, from a societal point of view, is is a um, 
Well, I find it interesting because a man who admits to rape is often very much punished by society. Yeah. But many men have raped. Yes. And they don't admit it and are not punished by society. Yes. Uh, His behaviour that I that I read about in the book is not alien to me. Like men have behaved in very similar ways towards me. Men who are just walking around and don't see any problem with it. That's right. Um, and yet he spoke up about it and he got very, very, very attacked. Vilified, yes. Vilified. Mm. Um, and yet I saw that he was setting an example for to open dialogue for men to actually talk about what is, what is acceptable sexual conduct, really. Exactly. <laughs> um, but so I suppose using that example, it seems like, as we mentioned in our introduction, it seems like he's getting penalised, doesn't it? It does, but from a soul perspective, mm-hmm. there's huge rewards for what he's doing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Including the reward that he has the ability to be repentant yes. for the particular action and therefore be forgiven. Yes. And obviously she has forgiven him yeah. for the action, otherwise she wouldn't engage in writing a book yes. with, with him. And that also has benefited her greatly. Yes. Her... her her forgiving him has been made a lot easier by his being repentant. Yes. And so that's made it a lot easier for her to Mm -hmm. forgive him. So that reward, and we talked about this earlier in this session, that reward of her actually reaching a place of forgiveness, which is like a a nicer place inside of her, some of that is... um, Because of his positive behaviour. Because of his positive behaviour. That's right. That's right. So the beauty of that is that he benefits, she benefits, yeah. and also it's so good what they're doing because they're openly discussing these particular things. Now everyone in the world has the ability to benefit yeah. from you know, their own example. Yeah. And uh, these are, this is very, very good for them mm-hmm. you know, emotionally and uh, from a soul perspective. Yeah. This is very good for them. Yeah. So, so when he arrives in the spirit world, a large amount of the conversation that he would have got mm for mm. raping his, his girl yeah. um, would have been uh, would be dealt with. already dealt with before yeah. he passed yeah. and so he will pass into a much better condition now than he would have done if he hadn't have done these things while yes. he was on earth yes mm. and if we contrast that with the the because we're talking here about the penalties if he had have just written back and got and <clears throat> you know uh, rejected her denied it whatever mm-hmm. the penalties that he would have incurred would have been quite extreme, wouldn't they, in that case? Well, they would have been more than his current penalties for, for yes. actually doing the rape in the first place. Yeah. They would have been higher again because he'd been dishonest about it as well. Mm-hmm. And it, that also would have caused her additional problems, Tra- tra- trauma. additional trauma, yeah. which he would also then have to pay for as well. Yeah. And this is what a lot of people who commit rape do not understand yeah. because of their their desire to not confess generally yeah. and also their desire to not take responsibility for the crime yeah. they uh, in the in the end not only have the has the original act caused a whole heap of damage but the the attempt to not take responsibility for it yeah is is much much greater damage now yes then on top of that um in the world today a lot of things are not viewed as rape which from god's perspective actually are rape yeah which include even having thoughts of rape for mm. of another person or desiring sexual energy from another person through demanding it yeah and these kinds of things yeah through for, forcing a person to have a, a sexual energy share with you yeah. or manipulating their addictions in order for them to do so mm-hmm. and these things god also views as as uh, as of the same flavor as as rape That's as a right. person yeah and most people on earth have no idea that they've done those particular things yeah. and so Many people, when they pass, you know, in that kind of condition, see that uh, that and often don't understand initially, mm. but eventually see that, yes, the reason why they're in the condition or state that they're in is because there's a whole lot of things about sexual uh, conduct and behaviour yeah. that they don't have God's viewpoint about. Yes. Mm. And so if he had written back and denied the whole thing and shut it down, obviously he would have personally had a lot of personal would be more penalized more penalized mm-hmm. and more unhappy but he it also would be attributed to him the collect the collective denial of sexual misconduct in our society correct partially attributed to him partially attributed to him and then the on that so that really um legitimate you know makes people feel okay to rape and sexually exploit women or at least sexually exploit women where they view it's not rape yes where they think it's not rape obviously god's laws uh, view differently but yeah. but human law or human conduct 
is often not very well refined. Yes. Um, and so often people on earth don't think certain things are right when they actually are. When they are. Mm. And so, yeah, I can see the, the penalties that would have been quite extreme also for society as well. There's a ripple effect of... Plus there's also the fact that he had a choice to do the opposite, which yeah. he actually did do in the end. He, yes. he, he did converse yeah. and share in writing. Yeah. All of those things were no longer possible if he rejected it. Exactly. Which means that all the positive benefits that yes. uh, you know, he had yeah. the potential of engaging at the time would not have been realised yes. if he had refused to admit his, his sin, sin, his, yeah. his crime. Yeah. And equally, she, um, is, she is able to um, display a lack of anger about what... Uh, well, she's obviously gone through part, at least part of the process of forgiveness. Of but, yeah. but also um, her, her actions are very good too because most women in her position would remain yes. enraged yes. and would probably remain enraged for the rest of their lives yeah. towards men or towards specific men. And uh, she has chosen not to do that. And that in itself has benefited her, yes. even if it did not benefit him. Yes. Even if he was, you know, he, he didn't admit to the sin, mm -hmm. that would definitely benefit her. And yet she, and the fact is nowadays, she's even getting attacked by other women for forgiving him. Yes. Which, which and she's bearing that attack yeah. and still continuing with her, with her, you know, writing and, and yeah. also sharing yeah. of the experience. And this uh, demonstrates a huge amount of courage on her part, yes. for which she will be greatly rewarded mm -hmm. in the future. So, yeah, yeah it's a yeah. good example of yeah. a positive uh, outcome. Ripple, and the ripple effect. And the positive effects. Yeah. Because these people become almost ro uh, role models. They're so attacked and yet they are setting an example as showing that something different can happen. Yes. And that can bring about change, change between the genders yeah yeah because yeah. there are severe problems intergender problems on mm. the planet today mm. and these are you know these are two people obviously who have learned enough and gone through it enough and and started to deal with it to a degree yeah. enough for them to become leaders in in demonstrating a different condition as possible yeah mm. yeah okay mm. um all right last one claiming i didn't know something when i did <laughs> Well, that's basically similar to the previous one we gave. Um, you know, again, we're falsifying uh, the truth about ourselves in order to look good with mm -hmm. others. And obviously um, that means that we are addicted to our facade. And there's a lot of penalties associated with becoming addicted to your facade yeah. and, then, and then portraying that facade to the rest of the world. Yeah. The major one, of course, is that you start believing your own facade. Yeah. So now you're no longer connected to your own desires and passions. You now lo no longer really understand yourself. Mm -hmm. And then the second issue, which is almost as large, and that is you now no longer have the ability to have a real relationship with anyone in your life, yeah. God or people, mm -hmm. and because you're addicted to your facade and your facade is not your real you. Yeah. So these particular penalties are quite severe and they will definitely exhibit themselves in every relationship you have where mm. people don't think they're getting the real you, where they, you know, they're only getting an image of yourself mm -hmm. and uh, sooner or later that will be seen by those people. Yeah. And if those people grow to have some ethics, they will probably no longer want to spend mm. or wish to spend any time with you. Yeah, and that's, that's part of the penalty. And also the penalty in, say, I'm a parent and I have that viewpoint, I teach my child that that the facade is more valuable than the real experience mm. and all of those ripple out effects. The flow on they? effects yeah. are, are yeah. terrible, really. Yeah. You know, most people nowadays do have a very strong desire to present a facade of themselves to the world mm -hmm. and also even to their most intimate acquaintances. Yeah. And that means that most people really are living totally alone. Yes. Because even their most intimate acquaintances have no idea of their real self, their yeah. real nature. Yeah. 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 And that that by fact makes you totally alone. Mm. Yeah. 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 Mm. Very true. Mm. Okay. All negative results and ripples are attributed to my lies or withholding truth. And God penalizes me for my lack of courage and truthfulness. Mm. So in, in a lot of those examples we just spoke about, you could see that. Yes. Um, and, and, and if your lies or withholding truth has an intention behind it, which for most people it has a number of intentions besides just preserving self. Yes. It, it many times has the intention to harm others too. Yeah. Or the intention to prevent others from being able to exercise their free will 
by being fully aware of the facts. Mm -hmm. These kind of intentions are very, very damaging to your soul from God's perspective and God's laws of compensation will will have, you know, strong uh, compensatory effects associated with those with regard to penalties in order to correct them. Yeah, mm. yeah. Uh, and then, obviously, um, my withholding of truth, my un, uh, immoral, um, dishonest behaviour, rather, is... If you decide to respond positively to that and make positive choices in response, then uh, obviously none of that is attributed to me. Exactly. Um, There's no potential for you to have a reward yeah. here. So every time you engage in behaviour that is against God's laws, there's no potential of a reward ever in yeah. your future, yeah. long or short term. Yeah. And, and so we're really precluding ourselves from future happiness mm -hmm. by engaging in you know, behaviour, which includes obviously the intentions, the desires uh, surrounding doing something like being dishonest or yeah. or even attempting to break any one of God's laws yeah. it, it has that effect. Yeah. So, yes, uh, obviously none of those positive rewards that could come are going to come. Yeah. And it's like, like the example you mentioned with that man, if, if she rang him up and he said, oh, I didn't do it, you know, yeah. hung up on her. All of the positive rewards of his current life mm. would not have had the potential yeah. to happen, nor would have the positive rewards uh, towards her from his behaviour. In other words, she being able to more easily forgive him because yeah. he's repentant, that would not have been able to happen. Yeah. And then on top of that, um, the positive rewards that come from sharing experience with the world and helping people come to terms with those kind of similar experiences mm -hmm. would not have been able to happen either. No. Yeah. And any positive, if he had have denied it flat out and she still went on to speak about it and mm -hmm. be public about it, she would gain positive rewards, but he would not, uh, there would be none for well, him. Well, in fact, there would be a huge amount of negative things negative. happening for him. Yes. Yes. Whereas um, now part of what she's doing has some small attribution, there's some reward for him because of this repentant state. Yes, and, yeah. and he's helped her to be forgiving. Yeah. When a person's not repentant, it doesn't help another person to be forgiving. No. So, you know, it would be much more difficult for her to forgive under those circumstances. Yeah. And, uh, and therefore he would, and he also would not ever receive any reward for his honor, for, for his dishonest behaviour. No. He's only going to receive penalties for his yeah. dishonest behaviour. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Okay. Thank you. Penalties for being immoral. What kinds of penalties do we encounter when we are immoral? Well, again, uh, in the world today, before we discuss, talk about the penalties, we need to talk about this subject of in the world today, the, it seemingly rewards immorality yeah. rather than penalises it. Yeah. And so we have this illusion then that God, in God's universe, there are no penalties for immorality. Mm -hmm. There's only rewards. Mm -hmm. you know? the, the first reward I think that most people feel is the seemingly seeming reward of instant pleasure, yeah. uh, getting getting. Uh, pleasure whenever on tap whenever you want it uh, with no consequences hopefully obviously everything has a consequence but yeah. most people have a tendency to believe it doesn't when so, it comes to sexual morality so sexual morality or even because um, here we should just briefly mention again that when we speak about morality we mean being in harmony with love from god's perspective so often on earth immorality is seen a lot about you know there's sexuality it brings to mind but there's a lot more to it isn't there no of course lying yeah. is an immoral act yes. you know um even withholding the truth is an immoral act from yeah. god's perspective yeah. yeah um so being selfish even is, is an immoral act having your addictions met is an immoral act from yeah. god's perspective yeah you know meeting the addictions of others is an immoral act from yeah. god's perspective so god has a very fine view of love yeah and therefore has very um you could say strict definition yes. of of what an immoral act is. Yeah, yeah. So as you were saying on earth, um, meeting my physical um, or emotional addictions is usually what brings me the pleasure in my life. And so uh, the idea of um, being moral uh, or the, the feeling that I'm being punished for being immoral doesn't, it doesn't register with most of us because we're simply engaged in that short-term pleasure. Yes, yes that's yeah. right. Yeah. So whether that pleasure is uh, 
you know, just wanting the reward for it or just that we want to be selfish. You know, it's yeah, like... yeah. <laughs> yeah and, and immorality, um, it seems like we, we get rewards for being selfish, don't we? Mm. We get more mm. of what we want. We get um, more attention. Whatever. Yeah, so you could say even the desire to control another person is an immoral act mm -hmm. because it's 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 rewarding selfishness. Yes, and and you know, but that's how the world is. We often view the, in the world that control is good. You know. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, manipulation, and control of other people is fine, is the way most of the people in the world see it. So, but God sees it as an immoral act. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, and we also, um, we often act immorally to meet the addictions and desires of other people, so not just ourselves, where we think, uh, no, I've got to do this because it's what they want, or I want to get something from them, so I'll do what they want. Yeah, sometimes it's driven by what we want back, yep. and other times it's just driven by fear, isn't it? Yes. Like, so we're quite immoral when it comes to the emotion of fear, Yes. where we're willing to do things that fear dictates to do, but morality would not dictate it. In mm -hmm. fact, morality would condemn it. Mm -hmm. Or we're willing to avoid doing things that morality would dictate to do. Yes. Right? Things like rescuing a person if we can and things like that. Yeah. But that because we're afraid, we choose not, not to, to do. do. Yeah. So it could be could work in either way, that yeah. one. Yeah. That's a big, uh, very predominant on earth. I couldn't because I was afraid. And, in, and as, as soon if, as we say as that, that's we, a valid, yeah. as if that's a valid reason. We take love out of the equation and yeah. just make it about fear. That's right. Yeah. And as soon as we do that, we've become immoral from God's yeah. perspective. Yeah. Mm. Okay. And often we act immorally to gain approval from others. Yes, particularly family and friends. Yeah. But also from society. Yeah. You know, frequently as a male, for example, if you're a uh, sexually if you have sexual fidelity as a male, it's frequently condemned by other males. Yes. Um, as as being less than manly. Yeah. And uh, and so forth. You know, the the morality of of hurting it or vi being violent with another in a male, mm -hmm. frequently, if you're not prepared to be violent, both women and men condemn you. Yeah. Because uh, they see that as a masculine trait, yes. when really it's a very damaged yes. injury trait yes. to want to harm somebody else in that way. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's plenty of examples where we could give where families in particular and close acquaintances often impose upon each other immoral behaviour in order to support certain viewpoints or beliefs yeah. That, yeah. that are within that group of people. Mm. Mm. And this is why often we feel rewarded for immorality. Uh, I often talk to you about the example of football players that are viewed in Australia as almost like nigh on God, really, yeah. um, uh, in terms of they're just looked up to and they are so worshipped. And yet very often they... And women are, often throw themselves at them. Yes. And very often it's almost publicly known that they are very um, harsh in their treatment of even other people sometimes, not all of them, but, you know, sometimes they're, they're drunk and violent and it's quite public. And yeah, I, I don't, I, it's like with every group of people though, unfortunately with sports people, because particularly the culture in Australia, but also in most Western society, sports is as a highly regarded <laughs> area of activity yeah. uh, for no real reason other than the fact that it makes people feel emotional about certain things in a certain way. Yeah, yeah. And, and as a regard, as a result of this high regard, yes. often there's a high amount of scrutiny too, which also uh -huh. then means that while you know the average man in the yes. in the world might be a certain way and have a certain terrible attitude towards women, if a sportsman does, it's often well publicised. That's very true. Uh, so I, I don't know if you, you uh, the trouble with these kind of things with media. Mm -hmm. which is where media is also being immoral, immoral. is yeah. that they are focusing their attention on people who are public, if you like, or, yeah. or there's certain higher scrutiny with people who are public. But the reality is God's laws don't scrutinise people who are in public or in private any differently. No. And so, so the reality is the way God's laws see those kind of events is no, whether you did it or not will just depend <laughs> completely upon what kind of reward or penalty you receive. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. It's not so, going to depend upon how many people know you or anything like that, you know, like it does in the world. No, that's right. And could you say then that th these people are rewarded for their sexual prow uh, sexual for their sporting prowess uh, and the immorality is sort of overlooked? 
Yes, there, morality is frequently overlooked by people who regard a certain activity yeah. as okay. Yeah. And that applies to all areas of society, not just sportsmanship. Absolutely. So, yeah. so you know, it applies yeah. in areas of politics, uh, religion mm -hmm. even, it applies, you know, certain types of behaviour are okay. Mm -hmm. Like, for instance, one immoral thing in Christian religion and in the Islamic religion is the treatment of women. Yeah. Women are not treated the same or equally to, as to men. Mm -hmm. Now, that is immoral from God's perspective. Yeah. And, uh, and, and, and yet those religious faiths believe that is moral. Yeah. So they actually believe it's right when God laws are actually condemning it mm -hmm. so so there's always going to be a large amount of compensation for that kind of behavior particularly when you believe something's right but have not given it much consideration mm -hmm. to see what equality is involved in what you believe yeah and and these kind of examples are you know littered throughout society i don't think we can sort of focus in on one group of people because they are everywhere <laughs> absolutely. absolutely everywhere sportsmen artists you know, movie stars, politicians, uh, any profession you can almost name has some level of generally some level of immorality in it mm -hmm. um, due to the, the, you know, associated behavior or associated money that you want to get from that particular mm. activity. Mm -hmm. So even in engineering, where it's more mathematical and more exact than yep. many other pursuits, there are times when people make compromises mm -hmm. with regard to engineering safety, which actually is an immoral act. Yes. And so from God's perspective, those kind of immoral acts are also mm -hmm. uh, penalised as well. But, but to um, stay on our topic, sometimes those immoral acts are actually rewarded by, by the organisation that the engineer is working for because it saves money or but something like that. But condemned by somebody else. Yeah. You know? so, yeah. so a lot of times there's a group of people that reward the act mm -hmm. and there's also usually a group of people that condemn it. And, but that applies to almost every situation or issue. Even if God agrees with you know, the act, even mm -hmm. if God's laws say, no, you did the right thing, mm -hmm. people on earth will say, no, that was the wrong thing. Yeah. And they will think you're immoral sometimes. Yes. <laughs> it's yeah. like, so the, the key here is obviously getting God's definition of love yes. rather than having our own. Yeah. But uh, you know, frequently we don't understand the compensatory effects of, those particular, of that particular behaviour. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, let's move on to some examples um, where we do see, in fact, the negative compensation for acting immorally. Mm -hmm. Engaging sexually when drunk. You know, I think this one's fairly obvious. You're, you're drunk, you're not being fully responsible for your behaviour. Obviously, engaging with somebody else sexually you mean, it means there's the, the potential of all sorts of things to happen as a result of that. By the way, being drunk is also an immoral act because it demonstrates no, a lack of love of self and mm -hmm. God views any lack of love of self as immoral. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, let's assume that we didn't see that. Well, um, sorry. And we, and we went ahead with the sexual immorality because we were drunk and then used that as an excuse to say, oh, you know, that I was drunk, you know. Um, from God's perspective, that is, is not a valid excuse mm -hmm. and should never be used as one. Mm -hmm. And yet frequently, even in law today, drunkenness is used as a valid excuse. Yeah. If you kill somebody accidentally when you're sober mm -hmm. or you kill somebody accidentally when you're drunk, often when you're drunk, it's treated as a lesser crime mm. than if you were sober. Mm. And, and, you know, obviously that's not very fair <laughs> and it's certainly not how God sees it. Yes. Yeah. 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 So uh, we're talking here about penalties, though. Yep. Uh, we just we did discuss actually um, the penalties for engaging sexually when drunk in a previous section. That's so right. let's and, move on. And, and it is and there are a lot of penalties, obviously, yep. uh, yes. including the fact that we're not connected with ourselves when we're having sex. Therefore, we're not sharing our own sexual energy. We're also potentially sh sharing the sexual energy of spirits mm -hmm. and we're also potentially harming the other person. We could take actions that are abusive of the other person and or almost border on raping the other mm -hmm. person. Uh, under those circumstances, and and all of that would have its own penalties as well. There's immediate, in, quite intense penalties for doing these kind of things, and yet most people do, at some point in their life, engage in this kind of activity. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, let's get on to talking about ripple penalties. Mm -hmm. um, what about 
lying when everyone else wants me to. Yep, that's a. It's seeming a, like when everybody else wants you to lie. Obviously, there's a lot of pressure now on you. Yeah. To be truthful, you know. To to not be truthful, you mean? Well, no. There's a lot of pressure on you if you're truthful. I see. Yes. Right. So they want you to lie. So the pressure is going to be if you're truthful. That's yeah. when you're going to feel the pressure. Yeah, yeah. When you lie, everyone thinks you did the right thing. But yes. when you when you tell the truth, everyone thinks you did the wrong thing. That's yeah. when you're going to get the pressure. Yeah. So yeah, it's sort of like I see it the opposite way around. That most to you know you got pressure to lie. I don't see it as that. You got pressure to when you tell the truth, the pressure is there. If you tell the truth, that's when you'll see the pressure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Before then, you just comply with lying. Before you then you comply, you, you, yeah, everyone will not put very much pressure on you at all, yeah. particularly yeah. if they all want you to lie. Yeah. And, uh, and there's a lot of immediate penalties for those kind of things. For lying yeah. in that case. Yes, yeah. obviously. So what are some examples of those kinds of penalties? Well, firstly, your own conscience immediately is going to be nagging at you. You're going to have guilt and shame, which mm -hmm. is going to live with you now for the rest of your life about mm -hmm. the act. Um, and, and you're going to have to detune yourself from it mm -hmm. to live with it. Mm -hmm. So that means you're going to have to deny it mm -hmm. and therefore shut it down and therefore tune out emotionally further. The more you tune out emotionally further in your life, the more difficult it becomes for you to live your life. To be, to and c to connect with other aspects of your personality, Correct. even to be creative. Well, to, to connect be... sexually, emotionally, yep. physically and spiritually, yep. you need to not be zoning out, not yeah. be denying things in the past. Yep. And so you're automatically detuning all of those other aspects of your life as well. Yeah. Uh, so there's a huge so amount of personal penalties. <laughs> part of the conversation, and oftentimes people get to a point in their life where they say, look, I'm just totally unhappy, I'm unmotivated, I don't know what I want, I, I can't seem to come up with any things that in, interest me or inspire me, I don't, I'm not creative. And yet often that's just the compensatory effect of having told a lot of lies, bowed to family pressure to Being do in denial things. of a lot of emotions, yes. Yeah. And yeah. every time you're in denial of any emotion, you're going to shut down the rest of your life. Yeah. And that's a normal consequence mm -hmm. and a part of the penalty system. Yeah. Besides the fact that you're going, you're harmed other people, you're not yes. giving them, you're, you're trying to manipulate their will. Yeah. What you're trying to do is take away from them the ability to make a choice. Mm -hmm. And God looks, uh, God's laws look at that quite seriously because mm -hmm. All of God's laws were there to encourage us to learn about our will yeah. and the proper use of it. Yes. So, you know, there's going to be severe amounts of conversation on the soul for that. Yeah. And then on top of that, you've got your relationships attained with other people. People know that they can't always trust you. Mm -hmm. They also know that you, you can't always be trusted to be honest with them. They know that the relationship they have with mm -hmm. you now is tentative. Uh, Even the person who's pressuring you to lie for their own. They'll know that. They'll know that. Yeah, exactly. So they, they know you can't really be trusted That's right. uh, it, when it comes to them dealing with them. And they also know that they can manipulate you by the use of fear. Yeah. So in other words, they can threaten you and get you to lie mm -hmm. and, and manip therefore manipulate your life. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so, you know, many people who decide to engage this kind of behaviour eventually end up being manipulated quite a lot by society or by their friends or their family. Yeah, because they know that that's a possibility. Yes. And really when we engage in a lie because other people want us to, we, we're part of a kind of a cover-up, aren't we? Yes. Um, and we encourage that kind of covering up of truth on a societal scale. That's right. A family scale, a friendship scale, and it, it expands. So all of that is negative so then we end up in situations where people are probably going to be lying like to us, us of course. because we've contributed to this idea that having a but covering what, up but is the other okay. But the other sad thing is we're going to expect that they are lying. Yes, yeah, because we're a liar. Because <laughs> we're a liar too, yeah. you know, and we, yeah. we think, well, everyone lies, so sooner or later someone's going to lie to me too. So we have trust issues then. Well, we have trust issues and trust being trusted issues as well. Trustworthiness and trust of yeah. others. Yeah. yeah, and and in the end, we also have quite a flawed view of the potential of humanity. Yeah which is quite a severe belief, uh, you know, system that, that now has developed where, where we don't trust in anything good or yeah. utopian yeah, um, because we don't think it's possible. Yes. And this is where, because we're speaking about immorality, aren't we, which is all about God's, uh, 
God's love and God's definitions of love and God's framework of love. And when we act in these immoral ways, it's so serious, isn't it? Because as you said, we disconnect from the actual potentials uh, in a very major way. Yes, we, the potential we, to have a, 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 a close relationship intimately with your partner mm -hmm. is gone. The potential to have a close relationship with God is gone. Mm -hmm. The potential to have a close relationship with any friend other than a friend who agrees with your lies is yeah. gone. Yeah. And, and nobody really knows who you are yeah. ever. Yeah. And in fact, you get to the you end where the you don't even you don't know, know who you are. Yeah, yeah. Not, not very nice results. No. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, final one? Yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Meeting others' addictions to obtain a reward. Yes, I feel this aspect of addictions needs to be covered because it's like, you know, we, we often think that addictions are just minor, you know, that they, they have, you know, we see them as, oh, well, that's what the other person wanted, so I gave them what they wanted, or that's what I wanted, and that other person wanted to give me what I wanted, so that's all great, isn't it? We're, we're all just looking after each other, isn't it? Fantastic type of thing is the way we see it. Yeah, and when we're speaking about addiction here, we're speaking about not just <clears throat> physical addictions to no. substances or food or uh, exercise or, or exercise, anything, anything physical. Anything like yeah. We're talking about codependence in relationships. We're talking about the uh, use of uh, one emotion to avoid a, another, another emotion, group of emotions. manipulating others to avoid our emotions. Anything we do basically to avoid our emotional experience is an addiction, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, or the same applying where we're willing to give other people whatever they are addicted to. Yeah. And when you feed an addiction, you just create monsters, to be frank. Yeah. And, and yeah. to be frank, most of the monsters that have ever lived on the planet that have caused genocide of billions and millions of people mm -hmm. have all been created through somebody meeting their addictions. Mm. So, so Quite you know, at the end of the day, this is a very serious moral problem. Yeah. And, uh, and in fact, one of the most serious moral problems because the people, people on earth do not and are not aware of it yeah. and they don't want to be aware of it. Yeah. And they often will fight for their addictions uh, quite severely, particularly mm -hmm. if their addictions are driven by an underlying fear. Yeah. And then they'll fight to the death many times mm -hmm. for their addiction. So, you know, these, these addictions have caused wars, they've caused religious genocides, uh, they've caused all sorts of problems on the planet. Yeah. And uh, right down into family issues and personal issues, they are severe and and obviously you can see the negative results everywhere you look yeah it's not like you know need to be too um you know clever to examine everything you know too clever you, you know just by a general look at everything that's going on in society and within your own life you you'll be able to see if you're truly reflective you'll be able to see quite severe, you know, the quite severe consequences, the pe quite severe penalties that the compensatory laws are bringing mm -hmm. to try and correct the addictive behaviour. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm. Okay, awesome. All right, and then uh, just finally to mention that um, uh, all the negative results from our acting immorally, all the ripple effects are attributed to us. If yep. we had the intention, remember, yep. if we had the intention and the desire to have those effects and they'll all be attributed to us. And even some of the ones we didn't have an intention for <laughs> are going to be partially attributed to us as well. Yep. And, and then on top of that, we, we also are demonstrating a lack of moral fortitude. Yeah. And, and that in itself is a very deep character flaw, yes. which eventually God's laws will attempt to correct. And all of that compensation is the attempt to correct it, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah. The compensatory yeah. laws are attempting to correct it the instant it occurs. Mm -hmm. yeah. And obviously, as we're mentioning at the end of every sec section here, if somebody chooses to act positively uh, in response to my immoral behaviour, then that that's not attributed to me. And often people do say, you know, oh, kid, I hit you to make you stronger and look at you, you're stronger. And they try and take credit, credit for... for the terrible behaviour. <laughs> yes. As if the terrible behaviour has done something good to you. <laughs> yes. yes. And that they think they should be rewarded for that yes. abuse. And that, that thought is often uh, perpetrated in society and by self-help books and so forth as yes. well. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah, if I didn't have such a hard life, then I would have turned out to be a different person. Yeah. That's not necessarily a given um, you know, fortunately, the person made the right choices, obviously, if they turned yes. out better. Yeah. But none of the right choices are ever going to be attributed to the original act that was, no. that was harmful or immoral. Yes. The other problem with regard to the, the issue of positive results is that people frequently are in this state of 
what would you call it, um, like desiring to believe that that the negative creates positive, yes, uh, uh, positive what, outcomes. It's and, a very, uh, I've encountered that a lot where people say, I just want to thank you. Basically, I want to thank you for your terrible treatment because it's helped me grow. And it's sort of this feeling of almost trying to reward the very yucky behaviour. Um, uh, and it's also... Uh, it's very disturbing. It is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's in opposition with really how God's laws are operating. Yeah. Is that what you were meaning to mention there? Yeah, uh, there's a number of things, and I think I might have lost my thought about it now, but there's a number of things I feel with regard to this positive result side of things um, not being possible. You, when you engage in moral behaviour, there's so many positive results that are all now lost to you, not only you, but to the world as yes. well, because you... Yeah have the ability to contribute to the positive results of the yeah. world. Yeah. And uh, and none of these, all of these negative things, these immoral acts are all from, you know, the things that are immoral from God's perspective. Mm -hmm. They all have so many negative consequences on yourself, but also on the whole world, you know. Yeah. And we, we need to stop seeing ourselves in an isolation, mm -hmm. particularly when it comes to morality. Most people think, oh, well, that's my business. Yes. You know, I, I'm allowed to, you know, be sexually immoral if it's only hurting me. Or, so, or, or we're allowed to be sexually immoral. We're both, we're both consenting adults, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, we were allowed to... Have an open marriage or whatever. Yeah, yeah. we're allowed to be, we're consenting, both consenting to it, not, not understanding the long-term detrimental effects on the soul. And, and quite frequently, immoral behaviour is justified by it, by it being engaged by consenting adults mm. um so it sounds to me like you're saying that um when i choose morality and moral behavior yeah. i immediately um enable a whole heap of potentials so in the previous example for we myself and the world for, yeah, for, not just for me yeah, yeah for a whole this ripple effect yes. that I can't even really understand. I can't even foresee No. at the time that I make the choice, Yes. Um, such as the complexity of the universe. And if you make a moral choice, you'll be rewarded for all the things, even the ones you couldn't see. <laughs> That's right. Um, but then conversely, you're saying when I make an immoral choice, not only do I shut down all those potentials. So they're all no longer a potential all for those, you personally. Not just my personal potentials, but all the potentials for all the other people that would have that been. could have been affected by your positive choice. Benefited, yes. That's right. Um, and, but you're, it sounds like you're also saying, I then can't, so when I make an immoral choice, a whole bunch of other things can happen maybe it's exposed and other people decide that's no good anymore we're not standing for that and a whole societal change happens um it's not ever going to be attributed to me any of that positive benefit no because that was really down to other moral choices from other people around me no. rather than me. as a result of my immoral immoral behavior yes yeah. so you sounded like you're trying to draw the distinction there between the credit that's trying to be take, taken when a change does occur or something good does occur as a result of immoral behaviour, mm -hmm. that is that is never attributed it's to It's illusory. You know, God's perspective is credit is only given where credit is due. Yes. Not where, you know, you, 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 know, you can say that a, a person who's immoral can affect other people and those other people work out, no, that person's being immoral and I would never do that myself now, yeah. right? And then, but, but that, that is the decision of the person, not, not the original immoral person. Yeah. The immoral person is not rewarded for that. They're penalised still mm -hmm. for their behaviour. Mm -hmm. So it comes back to the issue of personal use of our will and desire yes. and intention. And when we use it immorally, there will always be a penalty. It will never, ever be rewarded. Yes. And if I use it morally, it will always, always be, be rewarded. rewarded. And sometimes in a ripple effect that I can't even imagine for yeah. many years to come. And also never be penalised no matter what other people do with it. Yes. If other people use their will to penalise me for it, it's God is never going to, that's not happening yeah. in reality, in God's, um, in our... Well, then nothing, no damage is caused to your soul. Yeah, Certainly a huge amount of damage is caused by, <laughs> by them to their soul yes. when they do that. And sometimes they might damage our physical life or even our physical body, but 
it's not it, because of the um, soul-based reward. Well, because of the law of compensation, even if they decide to do that, we will end up in a better place as a result of their decision. Yeah. Uh, but they will never have that attributed to them. Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Very good. Yeah, there are no there are no rewards for immoral behaviour. No. <laughs> None at all. Zero. Never. Yeah. So any rewards that we believe there are yeah. are all imagined and are all created by a society living in the illusion of immorality being acceptable. Yes. Yes. Mm. All right, let's move on. Penalties for being unethical. What are some of the penalties that I incur by being unethical? Well, again, as we've discussed in these other areas that we've discussed, you can see with this area of ethics, frequently the world views ethics as, you know, something that's inadvisable. Mm -hmm. And so frequently there is a lot of pressure on us to be unethical. And in fact, a lack of ethics is frequently rewarded. Yeah. Seemingly rewarded by society, mm -hmm. and, but not by God's laws. Yeah. In fact, a lack of ethics is always penalised by God's laws mm -hmm. and never rewarded. Mm -hmm. so, so the God and the world have two completely opposite opinions about this ethical discussion. Yes. Now, from a world's perspective, it seems like if I'm ethical, uh, yeah, well, if I'm unethical, I'll be more socially acceptable, mm. right? In other words, if I accept that you've got some demands and I just meet those demands or addictions uh, without any consideration of whether they're right or wrong. That's just mum. <laughs> She's like that or that's just so-and-so. Yeah, just yeah, like you just got to pander to her yeah, a bit yeah, yeah. and she quietens down and yeah. all those, that yeah. kind of thinking yeah. uh, is all socially acceptable. In fact, you're seen as a bit uppity if you if say... You don't. Mum, I'm a bit sick of this. Yeah, and if you and if you draw the line in the sand in a real firm way, you're oh, viewed as yeah. self righteous and yes. everything. Then, yeah. Uh, so you're viewed the opposite way, right? Yeah. So it's very socially acceptable in society at the moment to be unethical in many areas of life. Yeah. And a big a big part of it though is that you just don't get caught yeah. <laughs> when it comes to big issues. You know, uh -huh. like you know where you've stolen lots of money or in particular money, but. Um, you know, if it's something that the rest of society looks a bit down upon, then just don't get caught doing that. Uh -huh. But if the rest of society agrees with it, and there is a collective agreement in society, particularly for meeting addicti addictions, addictive mm -hmm. behaviour, um, it's socially acceptable. So why wouldn't you do it? Mm. Like, it's unethical to get drunk every day. It's unethical to get drunk at all, to be frank. It's unethical to eat meat, but these are all socially acceptable. Yeah. And if you don't eat meat or you don't get drunk, you viewed yeah. as a bit of a prude or some kind yeah. of, you know, vegan, yeah. vegan militant or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and yet, you know, from God's perspective, these things are ethical. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. We uh, also uh, uh, obviously seemingly tries to reward selfish behaviour, doesn't it? So it's sort of like, if I'm unethical, then I, I'm just basically trying to get what I want out of life and blow the rest, really, mm -hmm. you know, you if you're if you don't have a strong enough viewpoint of selfishness for yourself then that's your problem you know yeah. if you if you haven't got the resources to get what you want well that's your problem yeah. if you've not got the intelligence to manipulate people well that's your problem yeah you know? yeah yeah <laughs> you know, i think it's right to do all those things so i can get my my selfish needs met you know <laughs> and and it, we're really talking here aren't we about how many times we confront in a day or a week or a month the choices we have to be ethical or unethical mm. and very often the unethical option seems attractive because of the way our society works or because of the, what we want to avoid within ourselves like you yes. said because we want to be it feels like well if i'm <clears throat> selfish in this situation it's going to work out better for me here and nobody's mm. really going to notice so i'm going to go ahead and do that mm. um and it's uh, these these ethics based Decisions are with us all the time, aren't they? Yes, uh, you could say in the course of a the day, there's probably hundreds of decisions we make that are based around whether we're being ethical or yeah, not. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the majority of people are obviously unaware of that, yeah. but also unaware of the penalties associated yeah. with it. Yeah, mm. yeah. Mm. All right, uh, and we often feel like, oh, if I act unethically, I'm just going to get some addictions met, and uh, 
um, other people get their addictions met and it'll seem well, like a great party. Well, most of us don't party. even call that unethical. <laughs> no. We actually call that ethical. Yeah. <laughs> we actually say, well, no, you know, if, if I'm going to meet your addictions, then you should meet mine. Yeah. <laughs> That's ethical. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Not, not seeing the damage that addictions cause and therefore addictions are immoral and unethical. Yeah. We don't see that. We, we, just, we just see that, oh, if I feed your addictions and you feed mine, then we're being ethical. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> I had a lot of challenge with ethics initially because I was like, well, no, in my family, everyone looks after everyone else's emotions. We don't feel our own. You just caretake each other's. That's ethical, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but it's not really. And no. also it's... Um, it it's also immoral. It, yes. <laughs> <laughs> There's another, another discussion. Exactly. Yeah. And also it wasn't quite as cut and dried as that, as I found out. So. No, when, when you truly examine all of our justified ethics, mm -hmm. usually you find there are a huge amount of unethical things going on mm. that drive the so-called justifications. Yes. And uh, so, you know, if you really had a discussion about ethics on the planet today, the majority of people would be severely challenged in the first five minutes, you yeah. know, because it's, there are so many areas of life where the majority yeah, of people, ethical. most of society has been unethical. Yeah, mm. yeah. All right, um, but often it seems if we are unethical, we're going to get the approval of everyone around us. Yes. Yeah, yeah we get the approval, acceptance, everyone thinks we're pretty cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> we give them what they want, they give us what we want then. Right? <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> if you don't give someone what they want, then they don't give you. you know? Most marriages are not ethical even. Yeah. You know, most marriages are based on the presumption that if I give you what you need, then you should give me what I need. Yeah. So if I give you safety, you should pay for that safety yeah. by giving me sex, yeah. for example. Or if I give you financial security, yeah. you should look after my physical, physical needs. needs. So if I provide financial security for you, you should do my cooking and cleaning for me. Mm -hmm. And, and if you don't, then you don't love me. Yeah. Right? Just like you then would think, well, if I don't give you finances, then I don't love you. Yeah. And none of this is love and none of it's ethical either. But a lot of people have happy marriages under those kinds of contracts and they feel yeah, like Yeah, I've heard people say, oh, yes, my marriage with that guy was so, he died, but it, is, it was a very happy marriage. I, was so, I miss him so much. He did anything I wanted. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually heard that comment. Yeah. Right, so. <laughs> it's like, um, not very ethical. No. <laughs> what about what he wanted? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, well, let's talk about some of these um, moment by moment decisions and when we make the unethical choice, what kind of penalties we incur. Sure. All right. So meeting the addictions of others to feed my own or others' selfishness. Yes, now there's a, again a huge amount of penalties here with addictions. Addictions mask things like fears and also generate a lot of rage. Mm. And rage and fears from God's perspective are both needing to be compensatorily corrected. Yeah. And so God's laws of compensation are focused around attempting to correct these particular choices and decisions mm -hmm. that we're making. And, and so, you know, naturally there are a number of soul-based responses that occur by the law as soon as you choose to be selfish and meet the addictions of yourself or other people. Mm -hmm. And by the way, whenever you meet the addiction of another person, you're also being selfish because there's yeah. always something back that you want for doing that. Yes. And so that's always a selfish act. Yeah. And so, so selfishness has a huge amount of compensatory penalties associated with it. And these include the, uh, the slowly increasing desire within yourself to see yourself as superior to others mm. and therefore having the right to demand mm -hmm. that your addictions be met. Mm -hmm. And, and, any level of superiority towards others will also then encourage an, a, an attitude of self-righteousness, yeah. which then encourages some very, very dark behaviour. Mm -hmm. So you're setting a groundwork, if you like, a table, a, a foundation yep. for some very, very damaging future behaviour in your life if you're mm -hmm. engaged in just meeting people's addictions like this yeah or meeting your own or meeting your own so that's that's the negative compensation for myself and then presume obviously yeah. 
that affects everyone around me, mm. uh, not just through the meaning of addictions, but now my self-righteous attitude can become a slippery slope, can't it, to very excuse slippery slope. a lot of... A, Aggressive behaviour. A lot of um, the wars have been yeah. justified by self-righteous behaviour and yes. a lot of religious wars in the past have also been justified by self-righteous behaviour. Yes. So, yes, it's a very, very slippery slope down into the hills <laughs> <laughs> if you go down that track. And here we're only giving, just giving some examples yeah. of of the different types of penalties associated. We're not giving them all. No. You know, these are just different types of penalties that are associated with you know, engaging in unethical behaviour. Yes, mm. yeah. All right. Um, refusing to feel my own emotions rather than attacking others. So this is a good one in terms of examining what is ethic the ethical thing to do. It's the ethical thing to do is to feel my emotions all of the time. Yes, it's unethical to impose your emotional condition upon another. Mm -hmm. And, and it's frequently done, of course. It's mm -hmm. the whole basis of codependent relationships yes. is to impose your emotional condition on another and have them make your emotional condition feel better. Yeah. You know, but from God's perspective, it's a very unethical choice. Mm -hmm. And uh, it has a lot of penalties. One of, one of course, is which, which is this very strong detunement that occurs from your own emotional state. And then high demands placed upon other people to accept your unhealed emotional state. Yep. And these kind of things cause huge amounts of damage in relationships, in friendships and society generally. Mm. 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 All right. Um, being untruthful to cover over events. Mm -hmm. We've talked about this. We've already bit. talked about yep. truthfulness. I think we've covered uh, yep. a lot of the material about truthfulness. All our yep. listeners need to do is listen to the two discussions we've already had about truthfulness and dishonesty to yep. see yep. whether yep. what rewards or penalties uh, are associated with both. Yep. But you can see that uh, being untruthful is also an unethical mm. uh, thing to do. And the main reason why, again, is because it is attempting to violate a person's free will. Yeah. You're attempting to stop them from being able to make choices and decisions. Yes. That's why we're untruthful. And, uh, and we need to enable the free will choices of others and ourselves mm -hmm. rather than attempting to stop them. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, and being unethical to gain the approval of others. So that's... Uh, that reminds me of high school, you know, uh, will um, a lot of peers pressure? Yeah, let's go yeah. and let's go and uh, egg that person's front door yeah. uh, so that all of us can think that we're clever or, yes. or, or cool, you know. Yes. The, there's a very unethical decision being yeah. made there. And, and different members of the group might have some problems with it, but they want the approval of the other members of the group. And yeah. so before you know it, there's, you know, 10 people doing it. Yeah. just because they all want to feel a part of a group. And eventually that's how group rapes and things like yeah. that also occur. There's so much pressure eventually that you, and you, if you lack ethics, you will mm -hmm. follow along in those kind of behaviours mm -hmm. quite easily mm -hmm. in, the, in the long run. You know, this is how group murder occurs. This is yeah. how genocides occur as well. Yeah. There's, there has to be thousands and thousands of people yeah. at taking out the genocide, carrying out the act of genocide for, yeah. for a particular political leader. Mm -hmm. So they're all in agreement with each yeah. other here, and, and that's unethical. They're damaging the lives of others. So you can see there's so many areas of life where ethics, uh, if they're properly imposed, would stop a huge amount of problems on the planet. Absolutely. And um, we're talking about the penalties here. And just from knowing my own desire to get the approval of other people and where that's led me in my life. So mm. that starts as a, a, a set of actions, maybe in school, or in your family, and then it's like it becomes, as you've mentioned, a very a, cus a thing I do. I will it, just will it become become a monster? Can it? Can't it within you, you? It's like it can be so strong now that you you, you feel like you just can't. You, you know, you can't avoid it. You've got yes. to do it. You know, yes. and, and it's such a terrible thing. And it, so you end up in situations where the pressure within you, because of the undealt with um, fear of disapproval, for example, is yes. extreme. And you're so used to just automatically trying to get the approval of other people. You end up making decisions and doing things and saying things that are very, very much almost in disharmony with 
what you even feel and what you know ethics in your heart even to be yeah. but because you've you've set it's sort of like you've set you yourself on a them. path and you've it's gotten well worn mm. now it, you're not just incurring the penalty of the decisions that you make day to day you end up in a situation where there's way bigger penalties way way much more compensation because you're doing things that even to a larger scale a larger scale mm. and you end up in associations where people use pressure and do yeah. things and you you end up feeling very badly about yourself often because you're so much in disharmony with your true nature even but but the feeling badly about yourself isn't strong enough to stop the feeling no. it's not strong enough to help you feel the feeling the fear of a lack of you know disapproval yes so you know and so you continue doing yep. these things only to feel worse only to feel worse yep. only to feel worse and eventually yep. at some point the law is going to you're yep. going to feel so bad that the law is going to make you stop which is the compensation the feeling bad about yourself is it's, the compensation it's part of the effect. compensation yeah. Yeah, yeah and so the compensation is always trying to provide this correction mm -hmm. and so the penalties are there for the purpose of correction remember they're not there for the purpose of punishment no they're there for the purpose to say hang on a sec if I continue in this behavior, there's more pain and suffering for mm -hmm. me here. I need to stop it so that there's less pain and suffering. Yeah. Right. And I, if I continue it, there's more pain and suffering for others. I need to stop it so there's less pain and suffering for mm -hmm. others. And, and this is what compensation is trying to do. Correct our behavior and bring it into harmony with God's love, mm -hmm. with the way God loves. Mm. Mm. Okay. Fantastic. Mm. All right. Um, Again, as we keep mentioning, that all the negative results and ripples of my unethical decisions, intentions and behaviour are attributed to me, especially yes. when I have the knowledge that it's unethical. Yes. It's even more. And this is not just a conscious thought about unethics, mm -hmm. uh, being unethical. Often we know we're being unethical, but we choose to deny it. Yes. In those cases where we've chosen to deny the awareness, we are compensated because we knew we were acting unethically. Yes. We and we chose to deny it, there's and an we chose to act. And so yeah, there's exactly. there's a lot of negative compensation. And also it demonstrates a, a lack of courage, doesn't it? Yeah. Lack of ethical and moral courage yeah. inside of us as well, which God's laws are also attempting to correct. Correct. Yeah. God's laws reward courageous behaviour. That's right. Mm. Um, and then the positive actions you might take as a result of me being unethical are in no way ever attributed to me. Yes. And, mm. you know, this, this, uh, the self-justification of a lack of ethics is also an issue, isn't it? Where the more you engage in a lack of ethics, the more you engage in a self-justification of your lack of ethics. Yeah. And so you end up in this moral downward spiral that yeah. occurs. And this is why people get to the point where they don't even think they're being unethical. Yes. When it's quite obvious to everyone around them that they have been. They have. And, uh, and that it has been very bad and very damaging. Mm. And yet the person themselves who's, who's engaged the unethical behaviour frequently doesn't think it's bad. Mm. And you see this a lot financially in financial systems, you know, where people yes. have ripped off millions and millions of people financially. Yeah. And governments have even done that, ripped yes. off millions and millions of people financially in order to prop up the governmental system without considering the ethics of it. And we mm. see this a lot in government prop-ups of financial institutions, you know, yeah. where private funds, these are private institutions that are shareholder owned, and yet when the, they make terrible decisions that have caused damage to large numbers of people, but also as a result of those decisions, they become bankrupt. Mm -hmm. What does the government do? Because the government's afraid of the whole system failing what it does is prop up that particular thing. So it actually supports the lack of ethics of yes. that particular institution. And actually in that process proves that the people that have been harmed by those institutions, the government doesn't care for, or even view as valid or, mm -hmm. or valuable. Mm -hmm. Their lives are not even valuable to, the, mm -hmm. to them. And so this causes a deep lack of trust and, and other very bad societal Yes. repercussions in, yeah. in the future as well. Yeah. So you can see, you know, there's so many problems with justifying these actions and even taking decisions which do justify the action. Mm -hmm. And we see this happening a lot on a governmental level yeah. and in a family level as well. Yes. It happens a lot yeah. where one person's lack of ethics is supported by everybody yeah. to the entire family's detriment. Mm -hmm. yeah. And to the point where it's not... Uh, 
perceptible to anyone anymore. Yes. Yeah, that, and this is what I see happening globally, really. There's well, a- I think it's perceptible, but, you know, if you look at what happens globally in the financial institution, I think everybody can see, you know, any reasonable person can see that uh, it's very unethical to prop up privately exactly. owned companies with government tax taxed funds. But so- they continue to do it yes, uh, because of the fears, of other fears, the other unethical decisions and choices that are immoral, mm-hmm. propping up the whole system. So do you think that it is a case then that a lack of ethics, which is evident in a global scale, has become normalised? Or is it that, as in acceptable to people, they see it as normal? Mm-hmm. Uh, or is it that there are there's a massive amount of a lack of ethics that is perceptible like the financial institutions you mentioned and many other things Um, but there's other addictions that people want nobody has the moral fortitude to address the issue yes so so everybody is acting in their own lack of ethics and morality to support so it's not that it's it's viewed as it's only viewed as okay because I want some, to avoid something or get something correct, from it. Correct. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, the lack of ethics inside of an individual, collectively the individuals are added together and they create a society. Yeah. You know, we can't complain about the lack of ethics in society while at the same time ignoring the lack of ethics inside of us individually. Yes. You know, that's hypocritical. Yes. If, we, if we're truly going to do, to do something about the lack of ethics in society, The very first person that we need to get ethical is ourselves. Mm -hmm. And once we've got ourselves ethically, then we can help others to become ethical. And eventually then through the collection of all the ethical people, society will become ethical as well. But at this point in in time, most people on the planet don't even believe that's possible. Mm. They they are so disillusioned with themselves even, they don't even believe it's possible for themselves to be ethical, and therefore they accept the lack of ethics that occur in society. See, see and I think that's a very um, that's a very important point. This lack of faith and cynicism that we have, that's directed inwards, then becomes out because we often talk about how it's just demonstrated outwardly, but you're saying it actually comes from an internal sense of hopelessness or feeling of yes. unwillingness to become ethical or yes moral, if i know that i'm going to sacrifice my feelings for your fear if i know that i'm going to feed your addictions mm-hmm. then i'm going to expect the whole of society to do the same mm-hmm. and and if i expect the whole society to do the same and the whole of society also feels the same way yep. now the whole society is being unethical and yep. all of us agree yes. and the only way that a lot of things happen in society today is that we all agree yep. for example we all agree that in australia that a ten dollar note of a certain which is a blue color in australia yep. is the ten dollar a note the Australian government has issued and it's worth a certain amount of money yeah. and we all agree and that's the only reason why that piece of plastic is worth $10 to yes. us uh, it's because of a collective agreement mm-hmm. now some collective agreements are valid yeah um, some collective agreements are completely invalid yeah and the problem with uh, eth- unethical behavior and immoral behavior and untruthful behavior which are collective agreements currently in society they're all invalid from God's laws perspective and God's mm-hmm. laws of compensation to try and correct them. Yeah. And then, of course, and, and as a result of that, you can see this huge amount of pain and suffering in society that is caused just by those three things. Yes. The, the lack of ethics, the lack of morality and the lack of truthfulness. Yeah. If those three things were corrected in society, man, we would have a completely different society yes. within very short period of time. Mm. And certainly within one generation mm. of, of, of people. Mm. If all children right from a young age, we, t- we, we talked about truthfulness, moral behaviour and ethics to all children. And I'm not talking about religious morals or anything like that. I'm talking about actual morals, God, yeah. God's viewpoint of what is moral and what is ethical and what is truthful. And, and if you inculcated that into each child of the next generation, mm-hmm. within one or two generations, you'd have complete societal change at a, at, a, at, a, at a systemic level. Yes, Cause, because what I often see is that people don't hold uh, positions within systems or organisations to any kind of standard that they did, say, even 10 years ago. No. They say, oh, well, we can't expect that anymore and we can't expect that anymore. It just no. Everything's degrading. 
but that's because it's our own expectations of our own conduct is also degrading we don't have any standards for our own behavior correct yeah correct and that's where these problems begin mm. so we need we need to have a personal uh, desire at this point we need to develop a personal desire correct the lack of ethics morality and the lack of truthfulness correct those particular things in ourselves we will feel in our own personal lives the rewarding compensation that god's laws provide yes. for us doing that yeah. but now we also have a potential for the whole of society if more and more of us engage that kind of behavior the whole of society has a a possibility of change yeah mm. yeah fantastic <laughs>